low gradient severe aortic stenosis with preserved LV ejection fraction has been highlighted since 2007 as an entity that portends a poor prognosis. In the December 15th issue of JAK, there is a meta-analysis of studies on the outcome and impact of aortic valve replacement in patients with preserved LV ejection fraction and low gradient aortic stenosis. So to talk about this, I have one of the co-authors, Dr. Philippe Pibereau, who's a DVM PhD at the Quebec Heart and Lung Institute and Laval Hospital and University in Quebec, Canada. Let's start at the beginning. Why did you do this meta-analysis? Yeah. This is a big important issue. Yeah, actually, yes, this is a very important and, and, and hot topic, I should say. Uh, um, uh, this is actually a, a new entity uh, that has been uh, described for the first time in 2007. Uh, so the paradoxical low flow, low gradient aortic stenosis. So these patients who have a low flow, low gradient aortic stenosis, but with a preserved LV ejection fraction. Because we knew for a long time that if you have a depressed LV ejection fraction, right. you have a reduced flow across the valve, and so the gradient may be low uh, despite a severe stenosis. But this is a new entity. And actually, in the recent edition of the guidelines, of the ACCAHA guidelines in, uh, published in 2014, there was a new indication for this patient. This was the first time this entity was described in the guidelines, and there was a new class 2A indication for valve replacement in this patient if they have uh, severe stenosis. But there have been conflicting results in the literature, and this is why we did this meta-analysis. And it's a pretty good size meta-analysis. Yeah, it's a pretty good size for an entity that is, as I said, relatively recent. Yes. Yeah, so there's actually 18 studies included and uh, uh, for a total of about 7,500 patients finally met the inclusion criteria for this uh, meta-analysis. And what did you find? Well, what we found, uh, I think the, uh, the most important thing first is that these patients with paradoxical low flow, low gradient, so again, define as a small valve area, but with a low gradient. So you have a discordance here, and which right. make this patient very challenging, right. and a low flow. So low flow in the guideline is defined as a stroke volume index lower than 35 ml per meter square. So these were the inclusion criteria. So, and again, all these patients had preserved DF. And these patients with paradoxical low flow, low gradient, they had uh, increased mortality, so worse outcome, compared not only to patients with moderate AS, but also compared to patients with the severe AS, high gradient, traditional uh, right. uh, type of, of the disease. And um, so that was the first result. But the most important one was about the impact of aortic valve replacement of intervention on outcome. Because you may have patients having worse outcome, well, at high risk, but finally, maybe they are too advanced stage of the disease uh, and the valve replacement will not help them. Well, actually, uh, there is the answer was no, actually. Aortic valve replacement was associated with a very important survival benefit in these patients. So it was wow. helpful, it was beneficial. And, and so I think this, this, this was the most important finding of the study uh, and, and actually it provides strong support to this class 2A recommendation that was at the time at the level of evidence C, but I think with this meta-analysis, it, it further reinforced this, uh, this uh, important uh, indication that we have in the guidelines. You looked at aortic valve replacement and Dr. Zogby is actually the one who is doing the commentary for your paper. And he said that the authors conducted a thorough and rigorous meta-analysis. So congratulations first off, because Dr. Zogby is definitely an expert in this particular yes, field, absolutely. and he was yeah. very happy with, well, with what he saw. I'm glad to hear that, and I, I should say that the, 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 uh, the credit is, is to uh, my colleague from Montevideo, Dr. Uh, Victor Dayan, who was the first author. This was actually a collaborative study from Montevideo, Uruguay, Quebec, and Limoges in France. So it was really a, a joint venture, and I'm glad that Dr. Zogby uh, one thing he did say is, is trust but verify. These patients yes. present a diagnostic and therapeutic challenge to the clinician. The terminology can be complicated as it incorporates a measurements of gradient flow, LVEF, and valve area. While cutoffs have been proposed for what constitutes low flow, low gradient, and severe valve area, the clinician should realize the continuum AS disease and the frequent straddling of these parameters in a particular patient. And it does. It, it can get a little complicated. Absolutely. And not all patients with severe AS are created equal. Yeah. Well, I cannot, I cannot agree, agree more with uh, what Dr. Zobby uh, write, wrote in this, in this editorial. This is very true. This is a, a, a challenging and complex subset. I mean, there are, there are different subtypes of patients. So those with high gradient who are symptomatic, I mean, 
these patients are pretty straightforward. They have a clear class one indication for valve exactly. replacement. Those who are more challenging are the, those with low gradient AS, where you have a small valve area consistent with severe, but a low gradient rather consistent with moderate. And of course, this raises uncertainty about the actual severity of the stenosis and the indication for surgery if the patient is symptomatic. So in these patients, we need to do more. And the first thing is to look at the flow. If you have low flow, you may have this paradoxical low flow, low gradient situation. And we have to remember, and I think this is what Dr. Zobi uh, alluded for, is that about one third of these patients, they have pseudo severe AS because they are in low flow situation. Though the, the, the gradient may underestimate the severity, but the valve area may overestimate. So you need some additional testing to confirm the stenosis severity. And we believe probably the, the best approach is to do uh, to quantitate artival calcium load by uh, multi-slice CT. This has been shown to be helpful in this patient to corroborate the stenosis severity. And yes, if you have evidence of severe stenosis, we now know that artic valve replacement is highly beneficial. Or as he would say, trust but verify. Trust but verify, and this is what we mean. Confirm the stenosis severity, uh, confirm the symptomatic status as right. well, and, and, and also maybe the most difficult part when you have a patient with symptomatic, have evidence of severe AS, well, are the symptoms really related to right. the stenosis? Because these patients often have comorbidities. Well, I think that in doubt, if you have symptoms plus evidence of severe AS, you should consider valve replacement. Because we know from the natural history of this disease that if you don't intervene in patients with a severe AS, the outcome is poor. So this pair of papers, including the uh, main paper by Dr. Pibaro and his colleagues, and the editorial by Dr. Zogby, Please look at the December 15th, 2015 issue of Jack, and please check out Cardiosource World News, where I'm executive editor Rick McGuire.